Hi, and uh, welcome to the State of Decay 2 stream. Uh, I am your host, Jeffrey Card. Uh, Brent Fitzgerald can't be with us today because uh, he is sick as a dog. Uh, but over here, next to me, we've got Carrie McCoy and Luke Adent. Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, these guys are both uh, in our quality assurance department. Yeah. Uh, they, they test the... Actually, why don't I let you guys explain what it is that you do? Uh, well, we just play video games all day and <laughs> get paid to do it. It's yeah. awesome. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Uh, so we spent, a, you know, we're kind of in the field with the last gate for when, uh, you know, the product is prepared to go. And we, we get there, we play with it, we test it, we run various test cases to, you know, ensure the quality of the game, hence quality assurance. And our main job is just to, to find any problems or give feedback on uh, gameplay stuff and... You know, we're, we're regularly asked for uh, checking things out before they get put in, and our job is to make sure that you guys have a great experience with the games you play. And you're also, you know, you got a lot of uh, stuff you got to manage because it's not, because even if somebody else, like say we got a, a bug report from the wild, from players out there, right. it got passed through, you know, you still have to manage, you know, keeping track of when the bug has been fixed, whether it's been fixed. When we claim that we've fixed it, <laughs> we still have to pass it to one of you guys, and you guys say, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, you're wrong. We or, tested it thoroughly, right. and actually, you forgot like five of the possible cases where this yeah, could have yeah. a problem, and, or Op whatever. Often that'll happen, or in some in some rare cases, we'll get something back, and another thing had broken. Uh, <laughs> you know, we fixed the leg of the yeah. donkey, but now the rib is cracked. So um, <laughs> things like that. So on top of that, we have uh, we have other teams that we work with, like particularly with Microsoft, that we have to uh, manage as well. Um, so there's there's quite a bit going on behind the scenes in the QA world. It always <laughs> seems so glamorous, but there's it's it's pretty tedious. I'll say that much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It takes it takes a lot of especially like, it takes a lot of patience. It takes you know the ability to sit there even when you do not feel like doing a particular job, still doing it anyway, which is one of the hardest like skills to learn just being an adult. Right. Uh, <laughs> and then and then you guys have to have really good communication skills too, because when, yeah. when you run into a problem, you don't just have to find the problem. You have to be able to explain to somebody else in writing what the problem is. That's right. And it's, and yeah. in a lot of cases, we'll get a lot of obscure issues that are that just. It happens, but we have no idea why. So we have to spend a lot of time hunting down yeah. why is this occurring? Like, what are these edge instances where this ran into this, ran into that, and then this suddenly <laughs> triggered? In a lot of cases, you'll go through the game and, and completely miss something and then come back a second time and see something happen because you just happen to line up the planets, you know? So uh, hunting down why these things are happening is also a big thing. So when we get uh, community bugs, too, we'll often have to go through and figure out like why are they seeing this why did we not notice this the first time it came through um and try and narrow down like where what what were they doing why did they find it we did so and that's kind of a fun thing about state of decay too also because there's so many dynamic like mechanics oh, yeah. to where people out in the wild will encounter things that we never imagined could happen <laughs> yeah because we just never got those two things in the same room together yeah, right. right uh so let's let's get started with the game sure. uh and let me switch here to this view. So, um, like, for instance, like, uh, It's Your Dad on Twitch uh, says, you know, the only problem I've had with the game was my cars going through the map. But it only happened once. Other than that, the game's amazing. And, and that's one of the problems. It's like we have these big, huge maps that are, like, and everything going on on them has something to do with physics. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and it's it's not real physics. It's a computer trying to guess at what <laughs> physics is like. And now and then it's like, oh, this car is halfway under the ground? Well, I guess that means it goes it's all the way under the ground. Yeah. yeah, that's where it goes. Yeah. Um, uh, it's, it's, and it's fun. Uh, and honestly, some of the stuff we see come in is, is quite entertaining, too. Um, so, but I guess part of the fun is the fact that we get to... We do get a lot more hands-on experience with the game. We tend to know it pretty well because while we have developers that are individually putting together parts of the game, we get to experience the whole thing in the full package, which is pretty cool. Um, and a big part of why we get to provide the feedback uh, for the game, because we get to see it all cohesively together. Yeah. Or taped together, depending on the situation and how fresh it is. <laughs> uh, Hansel Adola wants to know, um, which is easier, hunting bugs or hunting zombies? <laughs> Definitely hunting zombies. Definitely. Um, Especially because you guys play the game so much. After yeah. a while, it becomes old hat, right? Right, right. Those things. Uh, I, and just sometimes it, we still have things that we're just desperately trying to figure out exactly why they happen. So, yeah. uh, and it's it's just like finding that you know 
that rare game, and if you, you try to hunt it, you track it down, and you've done this a million times, <laughs> but it's just evading you at every step. It's, uh, it's, it's crazy, it can be pretty tough. Like somebody could send you a video of their car falling through, through the world in a certain spot, mm -hmm. and so you go and you drive over there, and your car doesn't fall through the world. Right. And then you try, well, they did something else right beforehand, let's try to replicate that, and then and then that doesn't do it. Yeah. Or other spots that have similar characteristics. Right. Yeah. And was then, this then, mission active? Was the car damaged this much? Did they have something in the car that for some reason triggered it? Like, it, we go through a lot of variations of what we see in a video and try to replicate the issue. Starting, of yeah. course, with exactly what we see in the video. <laughs> Yeah, but like with with, this, with a set of systems that are as complex as State of K two, you just you literally you can't ever really know all of the things that might have been going on behind the scenes. By the way, that one burning Jeep, our very first time we played this save on the stream, that Jeep got that caught on fire and we left it by that bridge and lit, we've seen it every single stream. We've driven That's by amazing. that Jeep, and it is Perfect. still on fire. <laughs> that is the most. I mean. The, the Jeep doesn't have that much fuel efficiency when it's driving around, but the fuel just <laughs> burning is, yeah. it can just last forever. Well built for burning. <laughs> uh, Real Trevstorm wants to know what is the funniest bug you guys have found. Oh, the funniest! Oh, if you have trouble, oh, yeah. Uh, remember the one way way back when where uh, there's the animation when you select the leader and it goes leader selected yeah. and a big orange thing. There was one where you selected a leader. And then one of the the little uh, this guy, one of the little portraits that are inside the cards for oh yeah, what looks like it circled around and then was really huge on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, kind of like a just got um, the wrong piece of UI yeah. and just wow. Um, I think one of my favorites was uh, a way back when we first were starting to get like a, the new maps in and stuff like that. There was uh, an issue with one of the cars that as it got damaged. Uh, it completely morphed the car where uh, eventually it became really flat and giant and the wheels were just spinning all over the place. One of the coolest so things so I've cool. ever seen. Uh, but it only happened to one car, which was pretty crazy, but that was that was definitely my favorite bug. I think, yeah, my, my favorite was probably the one where, uh, you know, our maps are constructed of these big, huge tiles, basically. Right. And at any given point, only, say, nine of them are loaded at once. And then as you're moving from one to the next, we'll unload some and load other ones. And I ran into one bug. It only happened in multiplayer, um, where on, like, the host's machine, one of the tiles would be offset one grid square to the right and one grid square down. <laughs> so we'd have a giant it was hole. It was Yeah, we'd have a giant <laughs> hole in the terrain and then doubled up terrain somewhere else. So I'd be like driving underneath a mountain one. and looking up yeah. above me and <laughs> like all the trees are there and, and it was really kind of creepy and strange. But then the clients wouldn't show that. Right. And so basically anything that was simulated on the host machine would know there was a hole in the world and anything yeah. that was on the client's machine wouldn't know. And so the clients would be driving their cars around like and stuff like that. Hole. Yeah, they'd be driving all <laughs> over the way. So I'd be watching their cars flying around in the sky and then they would stop their car and get out. And as soon as they got out of the car, the car wasn't theirs anymore. It became mine again because I was the host. Yeah. And so suddenly the car would just flip so out and like, fall through the floor and just <laughs> go nuts. Had no idea what it was doing. Um, yeah, that was a good one. That was great. And then, and then I saw somebody else run into the bug, um, and they were driving on the road. And, and the roads are kind of loaded a little bit differently from the rest of the map. And so the road was actually going over the big open space, and so we're like driving on this like rainbow road, basically. It's kind of neat. Over open space, so yeah, that was that was great. I always feel kind of bad when something cool like that comes in, because at first I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Wait, it's not supposed to. Act I that guess way. we have to fix it. <laughs> yeah, it's a feature now. Yeah. <laughs> There's two more. Uh, so we we have a few questions about like future possible features, things like that, like. Uh, um, all for 11 for all. Uh, all for one, one for all. That's who you are. I, g I get your name now. Um, they ask, uh, will we be able to jump into multiplayer from the title screen in the near future? Um, I can't make any promises about that. There's other questions, people asking about wh whether we'll ever have like rainstorms or anything like that. I can't really answer questions about future features that may or may not uh, ever be in the cards. Um, but uh, we know we are. I, I will say that we are paying attention to all the things we hear from the community, and we've got uh, a team devoted to you know parsing through suggestions of, uh, of features that the game might need, or um, you know bugs people are encountering, and are basically you know picking the ones that that we can you know make the biggest difference on as quickly as possible, and and are, are setting some priorities that way. So there are definitely there's some suggestions and some bugs we're definitely going to get to on a regular basis. Um, I can't make promises about specific ones though. Let's see here. So, 
Uh, yeah, so Alfred Ben, for, for instance, was asking about, oh, hello, uh, the question of being, uh, of being able to choose a map when you very first, uh, when you start a, a brand new game uh, and you don't go through the tutorial. That's, uh, yeah, something I can't, I mean, we definitely, you know, feel your pain there. Uh, we, we've been we feeling it here for a while. We definitely noticed the, the outcry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and so <laughs> the, the question of when and how we might be able to fix that, uh, it's an open question, but we're, we're definitely paying attention to that. And, uh, you know, sorry we can't offer, offer you more, uh, you know, more uh, certainty on, on, on questions like that, but, you know, we are, we are doing our best to stay on top of it. Yeah, and that's something we in QA would love too, because it would make picking the maps that we need to test a lot easier. Yeah, if we had a yeah, no, that's you know, true. A way to do Often it. Often things the game. that are easier for the player are easier for us. <laughs> right, exactly. So, uh, Cam Squared fourteen asks, "How do I trigger the Sheriff Legacy? Do I need a specific number of enclaves in the map for it to trigger?" So, the way it's supposed to trigger, you got you guys. Uh, He's a bit yeah, more yeah, familiar I'm, with the I'm, legacy I'm pretty stuff. Familiar. It, you, the way it's supposed to work. The is. way it's supposed to work. This could be an issue uh, in which we need to investigate more if it is. Yeah. But uh, you, you have a sheriff as a leader, uh, and all the blood play or the blood play the hearts the hearts the are hearts, gone yeah. from the map, uh, and that should be it. It should cast um, roughly soon after you finish. Yeah, there's uh, like a regular cadence where it will try to cast that mission and. If it finds like, oh, you haven't gotten the play cards yet, it then won't. It, yeah, right. But then eventually it should happen. Of all the four legacies, that's the one that has actually had the most issues with people reporting that yeah. either either the entire uh, mission series or or just a part of it, got it, won't start up. Um, and so we've 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 uh, instituted some fixes here and there to try to make Sorry. it better. Uh, I'm not dead certain if we've solved all of them yet, but <laughs> yeah, not entirely sure. We're uh, we're constantly looking at those uh, each new build we get. So uh, if that's an issue that persists, then we'll make sure to dive uh, super deep into that. Yeah. Let's see here. I'm gonna answer this one. Oh yeah, go for it. True Bulgarian. Does QA have the clout to force devs to add sorting to lockers? If so, <laughs> where can I send the bride? I like that. That's good. Uh, I wouldn't say clout's the right word. <laughs> and uh, I wouldn't say that forcing is necessary. For, right, no. It's not like anyone goes into there and is like, man, I would hate it if I could sort my ammo. That's yeah. a terrible <laughs> right. idea. Nobody yeah. wants that, right? Uh, so <laughs> we do provide a lot of feedback to the game in terms of like quality of life things. And uh, one of the things that we have talked about in the past is sorting. Um, it's just not something that we have decided whether we're going to add yet. Um, it may or may not in the future. Um, I really have no say in that, but they are aware that people want it and we want it. Yeah. Uh, so it is they definitely know. on the list. Of, like the the, 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 the team that, that sort of handles the ongoing right. improvements, it is definitely on the list yeah. of things that they're so considering. It's something that is being looked into. Whether or not it'll be added, I can't guarantee, but we would we would all love it here, honestly. It's something we all want. So one of, one of your roles uh, is to, as a QA team, is to set priority on bugs. That's right. And so, which, which is, it's interesting because, like, we don't necessarily do all the bugs in priority order. Like, like do you want to talk a little bit about how priority works? Like, how, how we set our priorities? Like, what, what's the priority one bug versus a priority four bug? Yeah, we can talk a bit about that. Um, so generally, the way that we decide, you know, what is needs to be fixed over another thing tends to vary about, very... Uh, on how much it affects the players in game. Uh, for example, things like crashes and hard locks, those tend to be like top priority. We want to make sure those are fixed and not a problem because we obviously want people to have a smooth experience uh, when playing the game. And when we get a bug in that, that is the absolute top priority, usually what that means is whichever developer it gets assigned to, they drop everything That's right. and work on that bug. That's right. They may have a, a pile of pri priority three bugs, but if a bug comes in that is, uh, you know, in their discipline and that they are set up to fix and it's a higher priority, they will stop doing, particularly for priority one, stop doing whatever else they have and focus specifically on that so we can get that handled. Um, which is something to consider when, you know, uh, so something like the sorting thing would fall under more of a priority four thing, uh, yeah. simply because while it does affect game, probably probably three, because it does affect gameplay, um, but because it doesn't really like stop people from playing the game, um, it's just a little inconvenient, it's more of a quality of life fix. That may get pushed to the side by whoever is working on that system in order to fix a bigger problem yeah. that is preventing people from playing the game properly. Uh, so it is something, again, we are considering, but there just may not be 
uh, the resources at the moment to get it uh, done as quickly as possible, um, or it may not just be able to hit the radar due to you know taking care of other more important issues. But yeah, ten, uh, we do have it, the quality tends to go from hard lock crashes uh, to soft locks to what, what's the difference between a hard lock and systems. a soft lock? Ah, this is a good one. Yeah. So uh, a hard lock is when your game completely freezes and just stops doing anything. You can't. No button interaction does anything. You can't, uh, it, it looks like nothing's going through. Sometimes audio will play a little bit, but it'll be like the same like sound effect playing over and over again. That we would consider a hard lock. A soft lock is when the game puts you in a state where it seems to be doing stuff. You hear audio, sometimes input works, but you just can't do anything. You can't move, your character's not responding to your movements. You're if, just stuck. If your character got, like, say, stuck in a rock and couldn't move, would you consider that a soft lock? Um, in some cases, yes, but considering the fact that we have, we have the, a way out... That's that, true. That, you got the radio option. Those yeah. type of things tend to not fall into that category anymore. Um, but there but were, if we didn't have the radio option that lets you get that unstuck, would be, yes, that, that would be, be a soft lock. lock. Uh, and in situations like, uh, a good example is uh, a while back there was a bug that when you exited the menu, uh, the game menus, it still stayed as the top input stack. So the game thought you were still in that menu, but vi visually you were not, and you couldn't exit out of it because it already thought you had. Okay. So you couldn't do anything. So you all of your buttons would be basically routed to a menu that wasn't that doing wasn't anything. That wasn't actually there, exactly. Gotcha. Um, so that would be a soft lock. That makes a lot of sense. Um, we've had a couple of questions, let's see here, about, um, uh, oh, so, uh, uh, oh, dang, I lost the one I was going to read. Oh, okay, so one person's asking us about DLC release dates, and we can't share any of those. Uh, that's, uh, you know, that, that stuff, that belongs to sort of the, uh, the PR team at Microsoft who, you know, and, and, the, and the marketing folks there. They kind of decide when we announce things and how. Uh, and so we can't, we can't give you guys spoilers on any of that. Um, I did have questions about, like, um, oh, yeah, whether whether uh, we were ever going to add a more solid, consistent um, story experience to the game, or if it was always going to be the very more flexible, randomized missions. And we had another person asking um, if if the Enclaves were ever going to stop complaining. Because, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've got these, like, random scattered survivors. You made them your allies, and they just keep having problems. They keep needing things from you. Um, the, the, the answer to both That's of those a great questions. Question for you. Yeah, no, it really is. Yeah. So the, the, so the answer to both. I mean, I'm only I'm only one of many mission designers, but uh, one uh, the answer to all, both of those questions is the fact that you know one of our top motivations for this game is we want it to be playable as a hobby. We want people to be able to you know to never hit a point where well I've done everything in the game and so I'm finished and right. I'm bored. You know, we want we want the game to uh, to continue to provide you with new content so that if you are the kind of player who just enjoys the moment to moment of I'm going out there and I'm looting stuff and I'm fighting zombies and you want that to never end, the game always has more content for you. Um, and so so that means a lot of randomized missions. It means leaning very heavily on the idea of missions that that, that can just keep going indefinitely and, and, and that you don't just finish them and then you're done. Because um, that was kind of our top priority. And then, you know, a secondary priority is trying to keep it from being annoying and keep it from you know and, and keep it from just feeling like oh well I'm never finished with this game because there's the other kind of player who doesn't want to just spend forever fighting zombies and actually wants that sense of completion and that's what the legacy missions are for so when you've done enough of the random missions and you feel like you've, you've kind of gotten everything out of them that you can um, then really uh, we're hoping that you'll be motivated to start blitzing towards one of those uh, one of the legacy missions so that you can complete that uh, you know complete that story, uh, earn a reward for it, and then move on and start another game from scratch, where you're starting from the beginning, the challenges are a lot more dire, and, and you can sort of have that beginning experience. It's kind of like right. with Civilization. You want to win that game so you can start over at the beginning where it's at its absolute yeah. most interesting. <laughs> right. you know? I think uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of achievements, and I yeah. feel like the, the achievements for this game also really kind of gather the breadth of like being able to experience it from the beginning each time, experience it on different maps, experience it with different leaders things like that, uh, that both give you a wide breadth of it, but also gives you a sense of completion when you accomplish certain things. Yeah, the, but one of my favorite parts of, of developing any game is coming up with the list of achievements. Because uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it just makes you sort of think of your game on a meta level and sort of wonder, like, okay, what are the parts of the game that I want to highlight? What, what are people going to think of as being their main accomplishments? It actually kind of, re kind of refocuses you a little bit on the game to try to think on, on that level. Yeah, I feel sure. like we should start it earlier even sometimes. Yeah, I, I, well... Then we keep adding things. And <laughs> 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 then we're like, oh, that could have been a great achievement. 
Uh, but yeah, no, I agree. I think that uh, we definitely have we have a little bit of both um, in terms of like. I think we have, people seem to really like just getting in the game and just playing the survival aspect of it, so we definitely did want to cater towards that and, as you said, add some story elements, at least something for you to follow along and have like a more long-lasting uh, you know, experience with the game. So we had a quick question, um, how many play carts are usually on the map when you start? Was it 9, 10, somewhere around there? I think around there. Approximately, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure if it's even always exactly the same I don't same think number. it's a static number, actually. Yeah, but it's, it's, in, it's in that zone. Um, we had another question about uh, DLC launch dates, and unfortunately we can't share those, uh, just because you know that, that's up to the marketing team. But you know, hopefully well, sometime soon, because we're excited about it. The anticipation is half the fun. Yeah, <laughs> right. exactly. <laughs> um, let's see here. Oh, True Bulgarian has a really interesting question. He asks, how difficult is it to achieve real-world-like tests of multiplayer behavior? Because there's stuff that is going on between people, how, people's houses with their weird multiplayer, you know, like, like with their weird network setups and stuff like that. Like, yeah. when you hear about a bug, like replicating it here on site, like what's the so, challenge there? Uh, I'm not sure how much I could talk about this, but we do have <laughs> some tools that allow us to simulate um, you know, packet loss and, you know, diff different network configurations and stuff like that. Uh, so while we may not necessarily, uh, at least here, test like, oh, the Belkin, you know, 2800 can, you know, do this <laughs> or that, we can definitely kind of simulate what it would be like uh, on different network connections, different types of internet and such. Uh, we also, you know, since we're working with Microsoft, uh, they have a rather large networking department, so a lot of that stuff we'll often send their way as well, because they can do all kinds of crazy tests over there. Uh, Truflegarian was also wondering uh, whether we're going to have monthly challenges like we had in, the, in uh, State of Decay Year One Survival Edition, and it looks like not. Uh, so that was that was a brand new feature on Xbox Live when we were first launching right. Year One Survival Edition. We were excited to sort of jump on board and, and really support uh, that that brand new feature. Um, now, you know, uh, Microsoft is, is a lot more focused on some of the newer stuff like Play Anywhere and you know. Uh, all of the, you know, it, so we really focused our efforts on supporting those more recent uh, sort of upgrades to the Xbox Live experience, and so that, that's where a lot of our efforts end up, ended up going. We, uh, you know, focusing on focusing on the the new hotness. Uh, I got questions about whether Breakdown will ever return, um, and we can't really talk about future DLC plans or anything like that. But if 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 it were, that would be pretty cool. We really liked uh, I really liked working on Breakdown. That was the first thing, one of the first things I did when I came here. Was yeah, on that was an awesome game. Though. I really do like. Fingers crossed, guys. I hope we get something like that. <laughs> we're, we're we're on the same page as you guys. <laughs> um, Stanny08 uh, brought up uh, the fact that apparently there there's some there's a bug that's causing some Xbox One X users to see their machines shutting down. Yeah. Uh, like the that, Xbox themselves. The Xbox is like, like it, it like. O over like it overheats or overtaxes some part of the hardware and right. causes it to shut down automatically. Have you heard about that one? Yeah, I think we are aware that this is happening and it is being currently investigated, and we are trying to sort it out. So, so yeah, so we've got. So we're all of you experiencing that, I'm sorry. It's, yeah, we're looking into it. <laughs> and, I mean, and that's one of those things where it's like you know, if if it's some weird detail about you know the hardware in one particular situation, right? It's really hard to be to, to be sure that we're replicating it correctly, that's like right. we're, that we're even at, that we're even trying the same thing. Um, um, the good news is I do believe there is a dev here that's also experiencing the same issue. Mm -hmm. uh, so we may have uh, at least uh, something to look at more directly to get an idea of why this is happening. It's weird to feel good and lucky about bad things right. happening. But that's kind of, I mean, right? Like, like, did you ever get like really excited? Like, oh my gosh, this bug happened. Yes! So many times. It's absurd. <laughs> like, you'll sometimes see a cool bug and be like, oh, this bug's amazing. And then you're like... Oh, but it's a bug. Like, <laughs> you get excited about the things you do in your job. Unfortunately, our job is finding ways to break the game. So, yeah. So, yeah, we're actually playing right now on an Xbox One X. That's uh, we used to be playing on a big, massive PC uh, in the old streaming setup, and now that we've got our new streaming setup over here, we left that big PC over there so people could do the tests and things they needed to do on it, so, and I wouldn't be getting in their way anymore. And now, so now we've got an Xbox One X. So that's what you're that's what you're seeing on the oh. screen here is Xbox One X gameplay. Let's see here. Um, Alpha Ben asks, uh, "Will y'all add more bases?" Uh, the thing about bases is they are one of some of, one of the biggest, most complex parts 
of our entire game. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Like each base takes a huge amount of work to get it all set up, working properly, tested properly. I mean, they, I imagine the when the bases first went in, there were scads of problems with them. Oh yeah, right? there, yeah. and there was there's so many things involved with it, uh, in in terms of like. You know, community skills, uh, facilities, built-in facilities, facility mods, crafting, all that stuff. Then you got multiplayer to add on top of that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they are they are a huge undertaking. Um, but you know, nothing's impossible. <laughs> like here, like, like you might have say like a, 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 a an empty slot on the corner of a base, and if you build a watchtower there, the uh, the staircase is up against a wall. Right. And so somebody has to rotate That's it. Right. And then, but then something else might have been rotated into a bad position. Yeah, and then you got to rotate that or slightly <laughs> adjust where the you know where the piece is, and it can be it can be pretty complicated uh, on everyone's end. Every combination, right? Like, yeah. like to really feel like you thoroughly tested it, you have to try. Everything. That's right. And there's also a really interesting. There's aspects of it that are super hard to not like finitely uh, or tangibly test, like the the concept of making every base every base desirable in some way, right. like yeah. to a different kind of a player, but also make them balanced so that not too many players gravitate towards one kind of base. Yeah. Things yeah. like that. We we watched a lot that you know there were a lot of folks. Uh, the, the vast majority of players considered the warehouse in the original game to be the base. Right. It's like all the other bases were just things you, places you stop temporarily on your way to the warehouse. Yeah. <laughs> um, and depending on your, I mean, there's some people whose play style is much more like I like to limit myself in clever ways and feel smart surviving just at the Alamo. Or or some people who are more aesthetic players who are like I like the fact that I can build something on the roof of the Alamo. Right. So I like this you know tiny crappy little base. Or like the fact that it's you know full of meat in the in the back closet, but uh, but but the but the general consensus was the warehouse was the base you wanted to, to drive towards, or or if you were really ambitious maybe maybe the uh, the, the rodeo or whatever that place is called the right. fair the fairgrounds, yeah. um, not a rodeo it's a fairgrounds anyway but so we wanted to avoid that in State of Decay two right we wanted to to make sure that there was uh, a reason why you might want any one of the bases sure and to even a, a much lesser extent. Um, we did kind of want to have uh, bases that were available at different levels of play, um, where some of them would be a little cheaper, but didn't provide you know the same uh, slots or built-ins that say like a much more expensive uh, base would have. So we Ooh, we did kind of want we wanted you to have options, but we also kind of wanted a little bit of progression involved with that as well. Yeah, and yet balancing the desire to have lots of options and the desire to feel like you're progressing. It's like like there's like this tiny tightrope you have to walk, oh, right? Oh, sure, absolutely. If you go too far on one or the other, you destroy. It. You know, too far on one, you destroy the other. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, Achilles Five V wants to know. Uh, says I want two bases and twenty survivors. Is that possible? Yes, with two save slots <laughs> uh, that are separate from each other. You can totally have that total. Uh, but no, we, we we've set it up so that there's actually some hard limits uh, on how many human characters can be active and stuff in the world at the same time. And so a lot of those, you know, some of the decisions that we made about community size and the scale of the game had to do with just the design. Like we, like we really wanted you to focus on a smaller number of characters so you could get to know them better and feel more invested in them. But then some of our choices were also motiva motivated by just sheer technical limitations, right? Like we yeah. just, human characters are expensive. They, they have smarter AI than any of the zombies. And you know, and they you know they have these very detailed faces, and there's just a lot of, a lot of aspects of them that make them expensive, and we, we just can't we can't just infinitely increase the number of humans that you have uh, that we're tracking all at once. Plus, I'd be really impressed if someone could have 20 people and keep them all happy. Yeah, I was gonna say like, <laughs> you get to a point where I'm managing like that many people, people, yeah, it's <laughs> it, it can get absurd, and you know, with limited resources. You're gonna have food problems. It, it'll be. It would be tough. Yeah, we don't. We don't. We don't yeah, we don't want to get the uh, community size above your Dunbar number, and you just can't even understand how many people. You know, you, you can't keep track of them anymore. Um, so, uh, Boldgrim uh, seven twenty two is asking about um, future features we might add, in, uh, specifically wanting the ability to change uh, outfits and clothes on characters. Mm -hmm. uh, that that's actually a, a, a request we've gotten a lot. Uh, it would. Including that feature would be a major kind of change to the way that our characters are built. So it's it's not it's not a trivial thing to ask for, uh, but we understand why people want it. And so it's 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 another one of those ideas that we're listening to and, and paying attention to and, and, and definitely sympathizing with. Uh, and, and the question of whether we'll actually be able to do it is is kind of an open question. Right. Yeah. Nothing to announce right now, certainly. 
Um, and same thing about uh, increasing the difficulty level. Uh, well, Lorda uh, wanted to ask about that. And it's, it's a very similar situation. We definitely, I mean, one of the very first things we did with the original State of Decay was increase the difficulty level, right? We added breakdown, which was like this massive, you know, progressive increase in difficulty. Um, and we know that that was one of the main things that fans of the game really wanted. So we've got that on our radar, too. Uh, we are listening. We are, yeah, we are paying nope. attention. Um, oh, uh, Black Ops uh, asked, uh, can, we add no can you add notifications to stuff that expires, like feasts and farm seeds and mods and stuff like that? Uh, we don't have notifications on those now, but I, I think I actually did. I think, did you send this to me on Discord already? Because I'm pretty sure I already wrote a bug that said somebody wanted this. That's pretty good feedback. <laughs> yeah, it, that is great feedback. That's the kind of thing, because that is one of the weird things about, about game development is that there's so many little subtle pieces of feedback that a finished game gives you yeah. that you don't pay attention. You, like, you know the information, you absorb it very quickly, but trying to think of it all in advance yeah. is really hard. Yeah, and... And testing the game as a whole, too, can become tricky in that regard because uh, eventually you've seen a lot of the stuff in the game. It is easy to become like, all right, I've seen this happening, I understand how it works. Uh, so a lot of times you'll have to take that approach of like, all right, so how would a player who doesn't understand all this, how would they understand it? That was and a so great those throw, by the way. Be, yeah, that was amazing. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate uh, So a lot of that stuff can get missed, unfortunately, due to that. Uh, yeah. Being like, oh, it, it's obvious, but obviously it's not obvious to everyone. So, <laughs> and we definitely, I think it's great feedback. I think we should definitely look into potentially doing something like this. So. Yeah, and the thing, and the thing that is 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 actually interesting to me is, is is the sheer like I was aware of the sheer number of notifications that Brian did request <laughs> yes. and set up. Like like yeah. he was on this uh, this crusade to, to to ask for so many different notifications for so many different situations at the base. And he got a lot of them in. Oh yeah. A yeah, lot of them into the game. He did. But each one of them takes a ton of effort to like to figure okay, well, how do we report this? What words do we use? How do you know how how many different ways do we need to mutate the text to respond to the exact data that's being given to you? And it just looks like, oh no, just write a little note that says this happened. But <laughs> this happened can be very complicated. Yeah, and I mean there's there's a lot of times where those things like trigger and sometimes we don't want your screen just getting flooded with notifications. So yeah, that's the other there's problem, also right? a balance of it. like yeah. and overlapping and yeah, it it can just be problematic. So it's something we, we do try to have like a careful balance of like we want to give you enough information but we don't want to overload you with information because we know how that can be. Yeah. Uh, that can be really really painful. Um, that was actually one of the things that we heard a bit in some of our earlier play tests was that we were overwhelming people with information. So we did have to kind of call that back a bit. Yeah, and the tough thing is that there there are some players who want to have almost no HUD at all, and they want and they oh, yeah. basically just want to be fully immersed in the world, and that's all they can see. And there's other players who are like, give me every single speck of information you can possibly give me at all times. I want to be playing through this web of information <laughs> right. that I can barely see through, and yeah. coming up with one set of you know answers that satisfies everyone enough that they'll enjoy the game yeah. is, is that's it's it's a tough tightrope to walk. Um, also, uh, Upstart Entry 26 asked, why did you take out the durability test gun? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I don't that know was what never in the game. Mean. I don't know what that <laughs> is. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, that was, an, that was an interesting bug, right? Because the, the reason... So, so the durability test gun, it was obviously there just so that we could test durability. Exactly. You yes. know, it's just a gun that's very good at testing durability, right. and it has no purpose in the game. And we thought it was not in the game. Like right. we thought that you know it existed so that we could cheat it and we could use <laughs> it, but that it did. There's no act way to access it. The problem was there was like this miscommunication where um, our mission scripting uses item lists to say like what your prizes are going to be. Sometimes you know, so we can say, so if we can say oh this mission will give you this exact gun as a prize, right? Or we can say this mission will give you this list of guns. Yep. You know, and it will choose a, a, a gun from this list. And so there was one Whoa. list of guns. Okay, you are doing some amazing Ooh, acrobatics in that car right car now. Over here. Holy crap! Yeah, no, 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 no. That was that was incredible. Um, really planned. So so we had we had one list that was all the ranged weapons in the game, which had some value to it. But we weren't supposed to use that in missions yeah. because it included things like the durability test gun. It was just ev literally every gun in the game. Yeah. But one mission designer did not know that that was off limits. Yeah. And just and there was nothing in the tools to tell them. And so they used that in one of the missions, and so people could get 
a very tiny percentage chance. Yeah, because I think it was it was a chance that one of the there was even a chance that one of the Enclave members could be holding it. So if you yeah. happen to kill them, then you would is, get it. Which yeah. most people don't do because that's not really like the idea of the mission. You could end up with it. But so it was a very small chance if you did a very small unlikely thing to get this <laughs> item that was not yeah. even supposed to be in the game. And so and so because it was so rare, it just literally did not happen to Slipped anyone in right our office. Slipped right through the cracks. Yeah, yeah. like and like you guys test the game all the time. Oh yeah. It that, that just that set of events just happened never yeah. happened to you. It's it's one of those planet aligned scenarios where yeah. just the right things all just kind of lined up together and we just we just it just missed we missed it yeah, yeah. well the thing, and like having you know 10 people 12 people 50 people testing the game here yeah. for a cup for a few months compared to millions of right. people playing the game for months yeah. in the wild it's just like it, it just the order it's like several orders of magnitude oh, yeah. difference and so like almost it, it's really easy sometimes you get into discussions with somebody will be like Oh, you know, that bug, it's not a big deal. It only happens like 1% of the time. Right. You realize that 1% of the time, time, when there's 3 million people playing the game, 1% is, what is that, 30,000 people yeah, will experience that bug? You know? Yeah, it's... So we still consider those. <laughs> yeah, so those we, have, after that we have to take them seriously, right? Like, we yeah. can't just dismiss them because they're rare. Um, let's see here. Oh, uh... So, Sarge's Gaming asks, any chance for cross-realm play? I'm assuming you're talking about playing... Actually, I'm not sure what you're asking. Uh, because because we do... We, we The game came out on two platforms. Right. Which is, you know, Windows 10 and the Xbox. And you can play between those two. Right. Um, you can play between those two different platforms. So, unless they're talk, I'm not sure what else they could be Only talking other about. Other times I heard about that is... Or, or heard the term is like Minecraft Realms or something like that, where yeah. it's like a shared world that's set online or something. Oh, so, so, so okay. it's not any specific potentially. I'm not sure this is what the individual's asking, but like maybe changing the structure of multiplayer so that yeah, like to where like it's a so world you're that sharing they both a community. Have it, you okay. know. I could see that, yeah. So we had to, it, it was interesting because we, we had to pick up front, you know, what kind of multiplayer we were going to have in this game. And because, you know, because there's a lots of different things we could try. And we could basically, we had time to make one of them really good. <laughs> and, yeah. and, 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 you know, we, and rather than trying to come up with like nine different ways to do multiplayer, we had to pick one, commit to it, and make it as good as we could. And so we chose the one that to us felt like it was the best blending of supporting solo players, people who wanted to play by themselves, and co-op players who wanted to play, you know, um, online with their friends. Right. Where, you know, like, you could you could basically play the game as co-op or as solo as you wanted to, rather than going down a path that either really required you to think in a solo player way or required you to think only in a co-op way. Right. Like, we wanted to sort of straddle that. And so we ended up with the, with the, um, with the co-op setup that we have now. But, you know, some players were, I, I understand, we're, we're, we're hoping for, you know, maybe a different model. Of some, maybe, like, you know, uh, you're playing on a server somewhere together, or, like, you know, you're all sharing a community and you're only playing together and you're never playing solo. Um, but we wanted to go for, you know, at, you know, at least for this, for this initial, you know, game that's coming out, we wanted to go for... The, the the setup that would benefit the broadest range of players. So co-op yeah. players could get in there together and play together and you know and 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 feel like they were sharing a community and sharing a, a, an effort. Uh, but also solo players wouldn't feel like the game was structured in a way that was unfriendly to them. Uh, let's My community see. is torn up. <laughs> I should like spend a time. Oh Did man, you... this entire community is a disaster. Yeah, Did you like, ignore a siege do, or something? Do we, I don't think so. Do we have an infirmary? So. Maybe, I, Maybe yeah, we don't we, have a leveled up infirmary. No, it's an infirmary. But it's only level one. Mm. Got it. Oh, oh, but we got the we got the resources. Oh, good, finally. We've yeah, actually been dying it. without this uh, upgradable, without this upgraded infirmary. That's good, let's do that. Okay, cool. Um, or I could spend just a ton of meds to heal each individual person immediately. <laughs> Um, Alfred Ben, that, Alfred Ben wants to know: uh, Does water reflect uh, explosive? Deflect ex explosive damage? If a zombie's in the water, will they be immune to explosions? I don't think it deflects it. Uh, I think the radius might be slightly reduced, but I'm pretty sure they'll still get hit by it. Because uh, they said they said that they hit a uh, they hit a, a juggernaut with a drone strike uh, while they were standing in the water, and it didn't kill the juggernaut. There's a lot of things that don't kill juggernauts sometimes. Yeah. Like you can't always assume that something's going to kill Actually, a juggernaut. They're, they're I've never tried on regular ground yeah. to kill a juggernaut with a. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I wouldn't know what the comparison would be. They they are pretty pretty tough characters. Uh, I, I'm not sure that the water was the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Masked Panda one two three wants to know if we're ever going to get rid of tethering. Um, 
so unfortunately, tethering was not something we just decided to do arbitrarily. It, was, it grew out of a technical constraint that we ran into, um, where you know the, the 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 multiplayer model that we chose, which is you know peer to peer, hosted on one one player's machine, meant that uh, that there was just no way that we could actually have so much of the world loaded at once that players could just go anywhere they needed to. Right. Yeah. Uh, or anywhere they wanted to. They go everywhere they needed to if, they, if what they need is to support their host. <laughs> uh, they can't go everywhere they want to. Um, and, and so it's, it's, it's kind of a fundamental constraint of the multiplayer model we have. Um, and so it, it's, we can't just turn it off because turning it off would lead to a ton of other problems that yeah. you really do also don't want to experience. Um, and so, so it's not that simple. Uh, it, we would need to, you know, uh, fundamentally rethink a few things from the ground up in order to to do a version of this game without tethering. But the good news is, uh, you know, uh, Microsoft just bought us, and uh, you know, Matt Booney declared publicly <laughs> that we're going to continue to work on the State of Decay franchise. Uh, so, you know, even even completely out there suggestions that you know that seem like they're completely out of reach for this game, that doesn't mean that they're never going to be a possible in the future. Um, and so, I'm not making any specific promises now, obviously, because we, you know, we are still supporting this game. We haven't even begun any future games yet. But uh, I just wanted to say, you know, like. We, we are definitely long-term committed to this franchise and to making it as good as we possibly can and to satisfy as many of you know fan desires as we possibly can. Um, and so, you know, just be aware that we've heard you and we absolutely know how you, how, how you feel about that feature. <laughs> and uh, if you consider a lot of the games that don't have tethering these days, uh, they're not necessarily peer-to-peer -peer games. Most of them are, uh, the server is held elsewhere. Uh, so a lot of that, uh, you know, networking stuff goes through that server instead of your, your friend's computer, you know, <laughs> yeah. or your computer or your, your Xbox or whatever. So um, it's a little bit easier in those types of situations to allow people to explore the entire world. Uh, but in a peer-to-peer -peer situation, it's there's, there's a bit more constraint there in terms of performance and stuff like that. So we wanted to make sure people were having fun in multiplayer and there wasn't a whole lot of other, like you said, weird stuff going on. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. And so, so there are other questions that are coming along the same lines. Things like, you know, w w would it be possible to get more than four-player multiplayer? Uh, right now, we're optimized for four-player multiplayer, but in the future of the franchise, who knows, right? And, and that'll be the answer to a lot of questions you guys have about uh -oh, future, future possible features. Or <laughs> Made some friends. Huh? <laughs> advances. There's a trap. Oh, interesting. So Greg Gore made a suggestion, which I, I don't think I've heard this one before. Uh, any thoughts on a mechanism to get vehicles back to base when you're driving around with a car already? So you've got an awesome car that you love, right. and you find a second awesome car that you love, but you can't drive both at once. Right. I know that feeling very much. <laughs> get a friend. I, yeah. Go on. <laughs> I, I, I love just having a ton of cars in my base. Yeah. Uh, oh, I've seen, I've, I've watched other people's streams, and I've seen literal parking lots. Yeah, full just of cars. full of cars. It's uh, like every oh single man, apocalypse sure. vehicle and stuff like that. So, so oh, if, I, you have, if you have time to spend on it, obviously that can, that, that's always an option, but yeah. I love this idea. Um, it's definitely not something that we uh, could easily drop Could in, right? easily just do, yeah, but it, definitely something we could talk about and potentially consider. I think usually... Uh, again, can't make any promises, yeah, but yeah. I like the idea. It's a good suggestion. It is. I like. Well, I usually think of cars as like another kind of resource. Oh, so for sure. So it's like yeah. it, it adds to the planning aspect of like it's exciting to have a potentially new car, but you got to work for it, and uh, <laughs> that could be frustrating, but also rewarding when you get it back. Yep. So uh, Cheryl uh, or I Cheryl L Cheryl. Or maybe it's just cherry in brackets. Like it's hard to Carly say. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the question is, uh, are you guys happy with Microsoft acquiring you? Uh, I'll, I'll give that a, a solid yes. Uh, because because yeah, the, main, the main thing that you know, being acquired by Microsoft, the advantages that it gives us is a lot of stability. For one thing. We're not an independent Absolutely. studio just wondering if we're going to be profitable enough to last <laughs> right. the next year. Um, it, 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 it signifies a really strong commitment by Microsoft to the future of this franchise. And it actually, um, you know, whenever two companies are working together, uh, there's a lot of red tape and there's a lot of, you know, just carefulness that has to go on uh, when you're sort of, you know, having two businesses collaborate with each other. Yeah. And when we're part of the same business, a lot of that, the effort that goes into sort of making two companies work together kind of goes away. You're one right. company now and, and, and it's a more streamlined process. Uh, and so that means we can focus more on, you know, uh, on just, Getting the game done, you get getting the right game made, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I think that's the biggest part of it is being able to uh, work. Working with Microsoft can be a little bit confusing when you're in, you know, independent company and they're, you know, they're 
the producer uh, or publisher, and we just have to sit there and like go back and forth between like decisions and what you know what gets done now, what gets done later. Um, now it'll be one big cohesive thing, which will be pretty sweet. Uh, and the security of having uh, a company like Microsoft backing us is fantastic. Yeah. Um, and you know, funding. Yeah, we'll exactly. Be, we'll have money to do much bigger <laughs> things in the future. So yeah, so we'll, we'll have to uh, we'll have to see what that what that turns into in practical terms because uh, right. we haven't even figured it out yet because yeah. this is all very brand new to all of us. And but. it's always been it's really fun for me to my dad works uh, at Turn Ten, oh. so oh, okay, we'll be cool. a part of the Microsoft family and a real life. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Black Black Ops asks, uh, are we going to add sorting to the locker? Uh, we can't make it's. I feel like a broken record because, of course, I always have to say we can't make any specific promises. But that is another one that's on our radar. So yeah, yeah that's uh, that is on somebody's list as something to look into. So um, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, Detroit Keith asks, how about some State of Decay two bumper stickers? Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I would love to have more merch. Uh, and we, we we have very little at the moment. In fact, we, you notice we haven't been doing giveaways uh, and stuff like that. Part of it is just because uh, we haven't even sent out the prizes for the previous couple of giveaways uh, because we because you know. We're, now we're in the middle of an acquisition, and the question of where you know we're still figuring out where all the money is yeah. and stuff like that. So we'll we'll, we'll definitely get the previous uh, giveaway merch uh, sent out at some point. So if 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 someone in the audience was awaiting some of the uh, merch that we were giving out previous weeks, you will get it. We've got your names on lists, uh, and you know we're 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 working on that. But uh, but yeah, I would love to have more merch for the game. But we that's not the kind of thing we we are in charge of right now. But maybe we'll have more influence after uh, over it once the process of being fully acquired by Microsoft goes through. So. I'd love to see some merch. I mean, it's I love the logo. It's <laughs> the whole thing is super cool, and, and I know other people would love it too. So I, I personally, I'm with you guys. I'd love to yeah. see some some of this stuff get sold. Well, I'm yeah. not sure if I'm allowed to point to it entirely. So stop me if you mm -hmm. need to. But there's the red bubble. Uh, like, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what the rules are on that, but yeah, go for it. <laughs> there's there's people that have like there's it's a passionate community, and there's people who have made like some stickers and stuff like that, and so yeah, that's so, always kind of fun to see. So if, if you Google stuff, I'm sure you can find things that people have made, and yeah, I'm, I have no idea what the legality of that is, <laughs> yeah. uh, and so we're just we're speaking out of ignorance over here, but yeah, that is that is a, a thing that, that exists. Something happens. <laughs> no, I don't think anything's gonna happen. We're gonna be fine. <laughs> um, so uh, Detroit Keith asks, uh, says the teaser video showed a flare gun being used. Is there a flare gun in the game? See, uh, not to use offensively, um, <laughs> not as a weapon. You? Oh, so I've actually turned off. I've turned off multiplayer. Oh, okay. No. So uh, there is. So we could pause if we needed to well, pause. You could turn it off. I mean, you could you show it. To. The radio command was there, wasn't it? I think use... you could still shoot it while. Let's see. Yes. Yeah, so go ahead. There is a flare gun. Uh, in the there game, uh, watch so someone like uh, call for help. It's yeah. used to uh, call for help if you want someone to join your game through matchmaking. Uh, so you'll shoot up the flare, and then you're basically Ooh, asking. Oh, nice! You're you're calling for help, as you can kind of see in the bottom right hand corner there of the screen. Uh, you're come looking for other game. players to come in and help you. So if somebody else had selected the volunteer option. They will then be queued up to join people's game who shoot up their flare. So did you just turn off multiplayer so it won't happen now? Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. No, we don't. We don't. We don't need to like because whoever joins us, they're gonna have to quit in ten minutes anyway, and yeah. we don't want to screw somebody over, right? So, uh, uh, true Bulgarian. Mm -hmm. We are not said to German. That's the way the achievement is worded. Uh, <laughs> apparently, I don't know this. It's a reference to a show. Uh, uh, yeah, it's Attack a on Titan. Yeah, it's a re it's a reference to Attack on Titan because yeah. um, the like when we were talking about like the very first conversations we were having about. Um, using flare guns uh, to as a multiplayer element. Right. Um, one of the thing, you know, one of the inspirations we had was Attack on Titan, which is like when yeah. when the uh, the scout regiment is out in the field amongst all the titans, they use these flare guns to communicate over right. very long distances through the forest and things like that. Um, and so we really liked that, and so that was one of the things we, they had in our head when we put flare guns in the game. Now our use of flare guns, you know, eventually ended up being this mechanic, me this mechanic that you see in the game now. Uh, but when I was writing the achievement for it, for for using a flare gun. For the first time I was like it, I just thought back to Attack on Titan. So <laughs> and I put like that. So the, the for, from the, it's the uh, it's the first line of the original the Attack on Titan theme, which is in German. Uh, <laughs> we got uh, is that Alfred Ben? Alfred Ben, yeah. That again, yeah. So again, it's not it's not a bug. <laughs> it was intended to be that way. So Alfred Ben, 
I did receive a bug that said that though. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah. did. I did literally get a bug that said one of the achievements is in German by accident, and I'm like, no, 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 it's in German <laughs> on purpose. And uh, so it, it was just a little free little vacation for the German translator who didn't oh, have to do anything. Right. <laughs> Instead, they just actually, you know, I, I don't even know if it's good German. It's just, uh, you know, it was, it, it was the it's lyrics of a song. song from Japan. That's so I've got that, no idea. That's on the right of the song. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's not my yeah, fault. Yeah, we'll blame them. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Blade of Shield says that he got the reference after he Googled it. That's actually my hope. Like, a lot of the achievement names seem weird when you first see them. You're like, what does that mean? I'm hoping people Google them because a lot of them are references to zombie media or to other media, things that, things that we really like on the team and, you know, wanted to, to maybe broaden some people's horizons. If, they don't, if you don't recognize the name of an achievement, go look it up and see, see what it might lead you to. Also, a lot of the names of the uh, home sites and stuff like that come from zombie media and things like that. So, right. like the, uh, the you know the farmhouse has got a name. The you know all the suburban houses have names that are references to things. Let's see here. Hansel Lodolo, we already answered the question about the funniest uh, bug that we <laughs> that oh, we had. Yeah. So you got You got to got to you know go back in the timeline. Rewatch Scrub the back. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, It's Your Dad asks, what inspired you to make the first State of Decay? There's a problem with answering that question, which is none of us here have worked on the first State of Decay. No. Sorry. So, I was hired about two <laughs> weeks after the game came out, and Carrie after that, and Luke yeah. after that. Um, and so, none of us were there for it. Um, I do know that a lot of the... Uh, so, so the one who can answer that question for you is Brant, and so when he's not sick anymore, he can come back here, because he's one of the oldest employees at the company, and one of the originators of the idea for State of yeah. Decay. So uh, he can answer that question for you uh, sometime in the future. So come back next week, and maybe Brand will be here. Maybe <laughs> yeah. he'll be feeling better, hopefully. If he's still feeling bad then, then uh, I'm worried about him. Yeah. Let's see here. <laughs> so uh, Boldgrim wants to know, how come there's no female fat zombies? <laughs> um, <laughs> so that's, that's always a, an interesting question, right? Because you want to have as much diverse representation in all of your characters as you possibly can, including your disgusting dead characters. That's right. You know, uh, you want to have a nice, uh, huge variety, and really a lot of the time it comes, it just comes down to time. You make this one, you make that one, you make this one, you make that one, and then someone's like, stop, and you're like, I have an uneven number of things. Yeah. Oh, crap, I thought I was going to be able to make more. <laughs> and, and so it's very, you have to really, to get really good, even representation, fair representation of people from, you know, with lots of different, you know, genders, cultural backgrounds, things like that, uh, you have to really plan it out in advance and make sure that you've got your priorities uh, set up. So that that's a pretty minor slip because we do have female zombies. You know, we do have uh, you know, from, and, and, and in our in our human characters, we tried very hard to make sure that when we that we would hit the gate with uh, with very good you know a broad representation of of people from different backgrounds. So that because we wanted you know we knew that our our players were a very diverse group and we want we felt like we wanted everybody who was playing the game to be able to find characters, human characters that felt familiar to them, felt yeah, like they came sure. from the same world that they did. Um, and in terms of the, this is something that we've actually talked about a bit uh, here in regards to having a bit more variation uh, in the zombies themselves. Um, so it's actually something that may or may not come in the future. Again, no promises with that, but it's something that we've definitely discussed and people are interested. Uh, but it's just one of those things where it falls under that lower priority of uh, things that we want to take care of. We want to make sure the game is running and functional, and that's definitely more of an aesthetic thing than anything. So yeah, and every um, new thing we add to the game also adds to resources. Exactly. So so it's like so I'm not definitely not poo pooing the idea and saying that you know like oh well too bad you know like we definitely want to want to do that. We just have to. There's a process of making sure that we you know that we are doing it right and not. Mm -mm. Sacrificing sure. other priorities, you know, inappropriately. Because a lot of us here would love to see, you know, female juggernauts. A lot of us would love to see female of the the big dudes with the shirts off or whatever they're called. <laughs> what do we call those? The bloaters? bloaters? No, not the bloaters. The uh, female bloaters would be amazing, though. The just the the chunky. Uh, oh yeah, just the traditional normal zombies yeah. that are that are just yeah. the heavier guys. So, yeah. You know, we'll see what happens. Uh, Surrealism wants to know: Would a battle royale mode fit into the game? Uh, <laughs> So you've noticed that we don't even have any PvP, right, in our game. Right. So, and that, and that was an intentional choice. Uh, that doesn't mean that we'll never have P PvP in a State of Decay game, but for State oh, of Decay 2, we did consciously decide not to do PvP, to, to focus a lot on... Um, what is, are you about to airstrike yourself? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> okay, we do have some PvP. We have, we have self on self. 
uh, <laughs> PvP. I was trying to bounce it off the side and have it drop. Oh below. my gosh, you killed Diego! Was he, was he, was was he our leader? original character? I think he was our first original character. You killed what our first done? original character. <laughs> you, oh. No! Not Diego! Look, That's now okay. everyone's depressed. <laughs> oh man. And injured. Yeah. Look at all Is that. Is there anybody left? Oh yeah, no leader now. Oh, was he? Oh, yeah, he, he was the leader. leader. Jason's like the only guy who's any kind of decent shape. I should have thought about that before I did it. No, no, that's totally fine. I don't care. Poor Diego. Sometimes oh. playing the game for too too really much like... as a QA person, you just don't think about what you do. Oh yeah, because I mean, you play so much in like you know with infinite like infinite mode on and stuff like yeah, that when you're like when you're that. not trying to solve a problem with losing health specifically. Yeah, it's way easier to turn off to turn off all the things that can hurt you so they don't like because you you hate. I imagine you hate it when you're trying to do some really complicated reproduction of a bug and then some unrelated thing kills you halfway through and you got to start over from scratch. Well, a lot right? of times, like, especially for me, it's it's both frustrating but also it, it's a reminder that the game is doing what it should. Right. When I'm trying <laughs> to do something and then there's just, I'm making too much noise and all these zombies around me, I'm like, get away! You're such a nuisance. I'm like, oh, you're supposed to be a nuisance. And <laughs> we got to vote for Hayden, actually, to be the character that we take over here. Hayden, there we go. Over. Hayden second. Oh, that's a cool name. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make him leader and I'm not going to become him. So I oh, he talks to him. plants. Hey, uh, Brant, what's up, man? Do. Oh, is he gonna be the new the new leader? Is Brant uh, gonna chastise <laughs> me for accidentally killing? Br Brant is razzing us for killing our for killing ourselves. <laughs> that, with was our that was entirely my fault. He literally calls my cell phone <laughs> to tell you that that is not the optimal way to play the game. No, it's this not. This is not how we're supposed to be operating no, here. It's not. Excellent. <laughs> so thank thank you, Brant. We appreciate it. And every, everyone everyone in the chat, Brant says hi. Today we've learned. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna promote him and then not play it's, I'm him. Glad that you're watching this, buddy. <laughs> Get better. Somebody else. All right. Oh, Jason. I'm still, I'm still getting like mess. Like we're, it's, it's so funny to like be doing the stream, but I'm also like I can read all of my work messages and stuff at the same time. Like I, I've noticed like three different things I got to take care of as soon as the stream is over. <laughs> yeah. It's like we've got, we've got a revision to the credits that I gotta go uh, get into the game. Uh, you know. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, we and I, oh, I actually I need to change the credits again because every time Crazy. somebody helped me vet a new name list for an expanded cultural background, I put their sneak their name into my special thanks list, nice. and I just got somebody else, another friend, to help me. And uh, right when I'm about, so I got to do another round, uh, round of the credits. Oh well, but uh, but we're gonna have more diverse uh, Indian names got in the it. game. So got it. Get, oh yeah, that's awesome. So probably not for the next patch. Probably for the patch after. But oh, that uh, was another really great bug. I I remember oh. way back when that I thought it was hilarious. Of all the potential combinations of names. Oh, when I had get? the uh, the brother sister pair, uh, and they were both named Jordan. Oh, just because oh, that's uh, it's a male name be, and a female uh, name, yeah. And they're brother and sister, and <laughs> perfect. The odds it's like the George Foreman family, you know. Yeah. It, it's funny because, yeah, it's probably something that could, probably does actually happen in real life. So, I mean, should have kept it, but, but yeah, no, but the thing is, we, we did that. We did. I mean, Excellent. like, perfect. there was nothing I could do about it. Like, I think you just the, the, the response on the bug was the probability were like one in this many, but now it's like one in 35,000. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. So I, yeah, I did have, I had some kind of issue where it was it was a little bit more common than it should be, and I made it way less common. There you go. Um, but, but yeah, it, it's total, that could still totally happen. Anybody who <laughs> finds the Jordan. The Jordan pair. <laughs> the Jordan pair, brother, sister pair. This goes out to you. Man, I feel really bad for getting that guy killed. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to haunt him no, the rest of the I day. I was even thinking it's as totally I was fine. doing, I'm like, this is going to be an awesome thing if I throw the, so, uh, if I bounce the thing off. The Nabu Cotton Sorrel uh, says, I finished the game 11 times. How many legacy characters can I have? I'm missing a couple. Um, I don't know what the limit is. I mean, every everything in a game always has some kind of limit. Uh, because if you don't have a limit, you just get yourself in huge trouble. Um, That's an excellent question. I'm actually not so sure. Yeah, about it was that meant to be kind of arbitrarily high. Yeah. But when you played the game 11 times, I mean, it's very possible that you ran up against a, a, a limit. So I'm not, I'm not dead certain about that. But we can we can look into it because yeah, because we don't want you to be losing characters that you care about. You know. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll look into that. Uh, Oh, Mr. Ouija Man asks, can you add a clock? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming you mean a clock that tracks how close you are to sunset and sunrise and, and, and to the sort of the updates the, uh, to your community. Or are you talking about a clock to prevent yourself from playing too long, like I do all <laughs> the tells time? It tells you real time. <laughs> it's yeah. like, oh, oh, man, it's already <laughs> midnight. Either, both of those sound valuable, so <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll, keep, we'll keep that in mind. Hmm. 
Yeah, actually, a clock for uh, in-game time would be extremely valuable, and it's something I think uh, was briefly discussed, but uh, not something that we've put. Um, it, it kind of went on the back burner for a while, so maybe something yeah. we can bring back up and, and see what what people think about it. Yeah, the, any any part of any game you look at, you know, you can always assume that there was a much more complicated, intricate version <laughs> that somebody designed and somebody wanted, and then just sheer reality prevented yeah. it from happening. Yeah. Oh, that happens a lot, unfortunately. Yeah, so. like, I mean, every like it, literally every part of this game has got a fancier version that somebody <laughs> wanted to do, and we we just had to triage absolutely everything because this is a very big varied game, right? And, and and in order to get all these different things working, each individual thing had to be as small as we could to, right. to get it all in. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Looks like, actually, I just realized, we're, we're, we're speaking of oh. watching a clock, uh, we've got a minute it's over. We're out of time. time. So, uh, Hey, thank you guys so much. Th you know, Absolutely. Uh, you know, anytime you guys will, uh, have time to come back. The thing is, I've been trying to get these guys on here for weeks, but they work so freaking hard trying busy. to trying to fix up this game and make it better and better for you guys that this is like the first time I've been able to get it. They just barely finished something. Yeah. And I was able to get this little tiny window where they were free for a minute to come yeah, on the stream. It, it, we've, we've been working really hard to make sure that you know uh, the next few patches are, are really clean for you guys. So we're, And we're still doing it. Um, we just had a little bit of time today, finally, uh, after just getting you know some submissions and things worked out, that we were able to finally sit down and, and <laughs> do this with you. Which... Yeah, and so this is you know this is and I think you know talking to you guys in the community is actually it's not a waste of anybody's time. You know we're all I think this is a very good use oh, of an hour sure. on all of our parts. Absolutely. So. Anyway, uh, everybody, you know, say goodbye, Carrie McCoy, Luke Aiden. Thank you guys so much for thank coming you. on here. And Been fun. Uh, yeah, and, and and Luke, thank you so much for for killing my leader. If you want me? To do it. <laughs> I'll do it again whenever you want. All right. <laughs> and uh, you know, I, goodbye from me as well. And uh, of course, everybody, you know, say goodbye to Brant, who I think is watching us um, from what, whatever you know, sick bed uh, and Sorry, pile of you know uh, <laughs> pile of vomit that he's sleeping in right now. Uh, you guys <laughs> say hi to Brant, and you know, we'll see you guys later. Um, that's us. Bye.